afternoon again everybody 12 spies welcome back to our let's play slash let's try bolivia in the first episode you can you know you, we clearly started off with a country that was relatively bare bones minimal infrastructure minimal min military factories we did start off with five divisions um two research slots and we were able to advance all the way to february of 1937 we were able to take a non-aligned country, turn them fascist, and we have now received enough uh, justification to go to war with Paraguay. So we will go ahead and fire that up. We're going to declare war. And you can see here, we're ready to fight the commies. So we'll go ahead and get our air wings, and I think we want them fighting flying close air support missions. We don't have a lot of them. Twelve, so I'm sure that that is just mortifying to Paraguay, but we will see how that goes. And it looks like they have already gone on the attack. Right now we're winning two, well, we're winning all three of the encounters. They, they and, you know, one of the things I mentioned last time is if you play this game long enough, you can goad the, the AI. Oh, and we have recruited our first division, which is great. We now can add another division to our army. So you can, you can really, I don't want to say trick the AI, but if you station adequate borders, you can get them to engage in conflicts that are much more advantageous for you, such as defensive wars along defensive territories, and that's what I've seen. And that's what I think we're going to see here, is we're going to see um, Paraguay attack us in certain spots, and clearly they're going very centralized, probably with all their troops. Hopefully these guys can hold um, and in the meantime, once they wear down, I believe this will present us with an opportunity to uh, strike back and one point the other. And we're just going to shift one troop up there to hopefully level the playing field a little bit. Um, these guys should be able to hold. They're fighting a defensive war. And it looks, we may not even need to shift that troop up there. I'm, I'm going to venture and say that I believe that they will be able to hold on just as you know, that number is not falling too severely. But we may need to actually, that did just decline one, so we'll go ahead and send that one. one division up there to help further re reinforce them. And I'm hoping, I think that the opening could come here. Perhaps if I can get a read on them. Cannot right now. I can definitely get a read on this one. Their organization is still holding relatively well. No read on this guy though. And they must be terrible shots. We've lost 42, they've lost 252. <laughs> Should have another division that will come online here relatively quickly. Check production. Mm, we're getting there. Slowly but surely, and construction as well. We'll go ahead and throw it in. Queue up a few more roads that need to be built. Okay, that's downright impressive. there. 
knowing that we're gonna have another division coming on and we'll send some more support. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. I think that's the right thing to do. I think that that will put us in a position to ultimately win that battle, wear them out, and then take advantage of their low organization or depleted manpower. Cancel that. Cancel that order. It looks like they uh, decided that they weren't going to attack that, that that wasn't in their best interest, and we are now currently winning all three conflicts. Which is a good thing for us. As the production continues to get better, we will eventually hit a surplus of weapons, and then we can upgrade them, which should further help us. And our next, next division is deployed. It does appear that they broke off all their attacks. And they have now restarted them. I'm really hoping that this guy will do something stupid. I need that first aid point. And that territory would give me a good opening if I could take it. Casualties are still relatively even. They've gone up. Apparently these guys have learned how to shoot a little better. Um, ideally, ideally, if you fight it correctly, you will see a lopsided casualty ratio in your favor. Now, if you've done it incorrect, it's not going to be in your favor. But right now, this looks to be, this is exactly what we want. We can't really ask for a whole lot more. Still got some time on research and national focus. And they have caught off the attacks. Which should, oh, they've resumed once more. really need this guy's organization to fall. And they are resuming on two fronts. Looks like they've got one from this province and this province coming here, and one coming here. Let's see what an attack would look like. It does appear that we could win that. But what would the cost be?
looks like this could happen. This may be our big breakthrough. Casualty ratio is still relatively low. Still in our favor, which is a good thing. When, it get, when that gets out of whack, you've either fought a war that you wasted a bunch of lives on, or you didn't set up the scenario in an ideal manner. At least given my limited experience. Now there will be some wars where you will have massive amounts of casualties, and that's just, that's how that is. But right now, it looks like we... I think I can safely say we're in the driver's seat right now. These are outcomes that we want to see. These are outcomes that will hopefully let us march further south into Paraguay and take their capital. In fact, I would love to see these guys get a little tuckered out. They're getting there. Hopefully when they stop and they decide to make a push. If these guys can't go there. That's, that's the thing we saw. That we we'll see how this goes. So we're gonna engage him. Maybe we can we can Pick off this territory too, which then would really leave us with two fronts to fight. Really, kind of two areas where they can attack us, which was, which would really be ideal in this situation. It would let us further consolidate and push in into Paraguay. And, you know, now that may or may not happen. Right, right now, we're, you know, we're seeing a little more disparity in the kill death ratio, or the really the loss, not kill death. Huh? <laughs> not playing battlefield. But um, yeah, they're 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 losing about twice as many more men as we are right now, which is what we want to see. And it looks like they have now been able to get another division into this province. So we're going to call off this attack, and we're going to let them waste their time against us. Still have some time before we can take this province. We really, really can use some additional troops, which we're not going to get anytime soon. Low manpower, and I don't believe that we have the weapon stores to do it. So we're going to have to wait some time to see uh, additional boots on the ground. Which, you know, that's one of the uh, one of the one of the tough things about starting with one of these countries. Um, it, it's it's not easy. It it can be challenging. Especially when you're fighting a war, you have low manpower, you don't have the divisions that you need to effectively wage war and wage it efficiently. But it, that's also some of the fun in it, is you get to take a country that by all means shouldn't be doing what they're doing and you know, hopefully see if you can have some success with them. And that's what I think we're doing right now. We definitely need to, you know, long term as we talk about this, move towards A, you know, we, we have got to get additional research slots, which they're, they're very down these focus trees. So, you know, I, I don't expect them to come anytime soon, but when they do, then that will enable us to uh, do a better job and you know, pick up the text that we need. But it does appear that we are potentially fighting facing some challenges we need to go ahead and prep for that so we're going to send one guy to give this division some aid over here and uh, slowly but surely we are making a push you can see and it took me a while when I started playing this game to really fully understand this but the, the green bar is the overall organization of the divisions and, you know, really, when that gets down to zero, then a lot of times you've routed your enemy, which means they're going to turn and run. And so we are slowly getting there here. We need to get to 100%. And we need to get to 100% quickly. 
anytime this little circle turns red, whether you're attacking or defending, it, 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 it's, it pretty much means that you're losing. And we don't want to be in that position. We don't really want to cede any territory. In my first playthrough, I did. Um, they were, I, I didn't declare war as early as I did so far in this game. And it allowed them to have a massive troop build up. And they ultimately ended up taking this area, this area, no, excuse me, this area, and this area, and this area, and this area. And they pushed me back into the mountains. And I was able to form a front around them and ultimately cut them off down here and inflict an immense amount of attrition as their supply lines were broken. And then I was able to sneak in a relatively large army and encircle them, doing the same thing. And then after that, they were very easy to uh, take out. But it was <laughs> it definitely wasn't pretty. So we have another national event that hopefully should spike the world tension up, the Marco Polo Bridge incident. And it sounds like Japanese and Chinese forces have skirmished inconclusively over the strategic Marco Polo Bridge located just southwest of Beijing. If that war is not already raging on, I have a feeling that we will see Japan and China duke it out. And they always duke it out. And it does look like... Oh, the Hindenburg disaster. That blunt blew up. Hmm. So we're going to go pick up construction effort too. I believe it's in our best interest. It gives us more civilian factories to hopefully improve our infrastructure, which was terrible at the start of the game and frankly is still terrible right now. Oh, 98. Come on guys, y'all can break through any day now. And we did. We have advanced and moved forward. So we're going to let them rebuild their overall organizational strength. And then, once these guys finish, they will go on the counterattack. I believe we're getting close to breaking these guys. And we can capitalize on that. Let's take a look at our losses. So 1,000 to 4,000, really almost 2,000 to 4,000. So we're still, they're bleeding more men than we are, which is a good thing. It's a really good thing and they have stopped. So let's see if we can mount a counter attack. And let's give them a little bit of aid. Let's see how successful that's gonna be. Looks like this battle. Mm, I'm not sure if that's going to turn or not. We may have more success down here. <clears throat> but we're going to monitor that. It seems to be holding at 75, which isn't bad. We'd like to see that tick up a little quicker, um, but not the end of the world. But if we can at least continue to maintain pressure on them, I believe that will afford us some success. Their, their organization right now is at 47%. We really need that to drop significantly. Unfortunately, I'm not so sure that we have the overall firepower and manpower to do that rapidly. In fact, I know we don't. And we're working with, what, six divisions? Maybe seven. Maybe. Yeah, seven. Not six. Seven. Forty-four. Down three percent. We will get there slowly but surely. Let's take a look at our technology. Oh, we will get solid color here pretty soon. From there, we will then take Sniper Team, which should help us a little bit. 
And still building roads. That is a good thing. And we are winning currently. And on the weapons front, we are continuing to get better at making this stuff. Now, one of the things that puts us at a little bit of a disadvantage is we do have in, insufficient resources. We could definitely use some more steel. And so there will come a point with one of the techs where we will pick up the steel factory and build a couple of those. I believe that they will give us the um, necessary resources to have some success. And it looks like this battle may be turning against our favor. Maybe not. I may have spoken too soon. Looks like their overall organization has declined by about 10%. Which is good, we just need a little more of that. So we're going to take specialist equipment. And I think with this next one, just kind of thinking outside the box. We really could use a land doctrine. Yeah, a land doctrine. We could really use more ways. I think more importantly, though. We probably need to continue to work on our industry. We'll see. Ooh. It looks like something. Ooh, they have now. This is exactly what I faced. They have plenty, plenty of units now. In fact, I think the next national focus that we're going to take needs to be militarism. We've got to get some more divisions down here. Ooh. But these guys are holding strong, even though this is low. This is a pretty good battle for us from a defensive standpoint. And we really need those upgrades. I think upgraded weapons would go a long, long way. But it looks like mm, we are still. Mm, I'm not sure we're going to get anything, any new, new divisions as soon as I'd hoped. But it looks like they're now on the offensive, and we are now fighting <laughs> with seven divisions versus eight. And that's that lopsided battle I talked about. But we are winning at the moment. Looks like with the reinforcement from these new divisions, their overall organization has improved because I'm assuming that these guys probably came relatively organized. And as long as we can hold and continue to win these battles, we will continue to whittle them away. And sometimes that's it's not as glamorous as you'd like it to be, but that's what happens. You can see that they have almost, we're still sitting um, in terms of losses. Uh, they're two times what we are, which is what we want to see. And that's how you're going to win a successful war. It looks like these guys may have the opportunity to repel whatever ta attack is coming their way, which then may open the door for an offensive. Yeah, it can be pretty boring stuff, but if you're really into the micromanagement of your troops and you enjoy that aspect of this game, um, taking some of these minor countries can be pretty exciting. I mean, and, and it's relatively challenging. You know, there's no guarantee, and it looks like they have now moved another division in on us. Not necessarily a cause for concern right now, but it is a little concerning. At some point, they may get superior numbers if they don't already have them. We really need to get to a point where we win some of these battles and we're able to repel some of these divisions. 
So it looks like they're sending one there, and they're sending four there, and these guys are taking on four. So they're engaging all of their forces right now, and we're winning, which is which is really, really good. Really good. We need to we need to wear down their troops. We also need to inflict losses, so hopefully it will erode their manpower away. If we can do that, there will come a point where they will cross a line where they can't recover, and that should speed up our territory gain, but right now I have a feeling that it's going to be relatively tough sledding. We're going to have to wear them out. And it looks like they may be shifting their line a little bit. And let's see, is that going still not, not worth And they're moving one guy. Looks like he may be moving down here to further spread them out. But if we can continue to win battles like this, I have a feeling we'll be able to make a push here. That would be ideal. It would also be ideal if this guy would get trained faster, but I don't think that's going to happen either. And we still are in desperate need for infantry equipment. Desperate need, but you can see the organization of these troops is, is definitely 25%. That, that's, that's exactly what we want to see. Meanwhile, we're sitting at 63. Much better numbers. 48%, it'd be nice if that were a little lower, but as long as they engage with uh, four divisions there, I think we will be okay. I'm not sure the Air Force is really doing a whole lot, but you know, when you have a limited number of planes, that's what's going to happen. And it looks like they have shifted this around. Their organization is now at 38%. I have a feeling that if this gets sub 30, we will probably make a push at them. And we may have the opportunity to do that. Maybe. Right now, these guys are bearing the brood of the attack. They were, let me rephrase that. If they can overcome the this 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 set of five, this five stack, I think it will open them up for a wonderful counterattack that would allow us to um, impress upon them some territory gains. But like I said, I really want to see this organization fall below thirty. And once the yeah, they're at forty, so yeah. But I think we're going to get there. I really do. I think we're kind of set up um, where we want to be to win this war. And then from there, I believe we can, if we win the war, we will turn our attention on Peru and then begin to march up and fight Peru, fight Ecuador, fight Colombia and Venezuela. And I think if we can take all those out, I think that we will then have the numbers and the infrastructure and the resources to look at fighting an Argentina or Brazil because I think, you know, um, if you're doing any sort of co-op play with a friend, you know, you could probably set a larger goal, but I think, you know, a noble goal with Bolivia is can you unite most, if not all, of South America? And then if there's still time left over, and when you're playing the road to 56, you you have two decades. You know, could you take a United South America and conquer the Caribbean and Central America, and perhaps the United States and Canada? But first, we must defeat the communist. And their organization is sub 30. And these. They are sub 32. This may afford us an opportunity to counterattack. In fact, if this falls to 20%, I believe that would be ideal. We 
getting there, though. I don't believe we're going to push. Let's see what we can do here. And Amelia Earhart has circumnavigated the globe. I don't know enough about the history behind Miss Earhart, but I, I believe there will come a day where, if history holds true, she will disappear. And it looks like we are losing this fight now. Definitively losing it. If we could shatter, if we could get their organization severely low, that may afford us some opportunity. But I'm afraid it's not going to. It doesn't look like their organization is declining as quickly. And um, we may be fighting on finding ourselves fighting a losing war. But we did get another reinforcement, which we will let that division um, kind of organize first, and then we will proceed with a uh, get loop them into the fight. As you can see, they have suffered now 7,000 more losses than we have, which is where we want to be. But I believe we are coming up on 30 minutes, so I'm going to pause it and make a cut. Thanks for joining me, guys. I hope y'all have a great day. And I will be back in Episode 3, where hopefully we can continue to advance and make headway in this war.